Yo. What up? All right. Um. So, uh, we got part two of Matt McCusker's The Speed of Light. <laughs> okay. Okay. Part two. Part two. Part yeah, two. <clears throat> so he was um relating the speed of light to uh, popping off a good one inside of your beloved one, right? Yeah. Yeah. He explained somebody, you know, don't do it in somebody that's not. Right. That's at least that's his suggestions. Yeah, yeah. That was that was speed of light, and he has um he has a lot of similarities to Shane Gillis. You can see, you hear a lot of Shane Gillis in his, uh, <laughs> he has the same, like, the same cadence <laughs> as Shane Gillis' comedy. It's probably because they do a podcast together. <laughs> exactly, exactly. A lot of similarities between the two. Explains why they're friends. All right, man. Yeah. You ready? Yes. Yeah, I'm a pretty good guy, I'll be honest. <laughs> Love my kids. I rescued my dogs. That was heroic. Yeah, man, I mean, yeah. Oh, please, please. Yeah, keep going, keep it up. <laughs> All right, hold on, I'll be honest, I'll be honest, I'll be honest. It was a bit of a financial decision. I was looking up boxer puppies on Craigslist for like 800 bucks and I was like, yeah, let me see what's up with those autistic pit bulls down there. <laughs> let me head down to dog Walmart and see if I can't get a deal. <laughs> yeah. Dude, when you rescue dogs, they make you fill out like 40 pages about yourself. I had to fill out this big booklet, and I, I got two pages into it, and I stopped, and I asked him, I'm like, hey, why do, why do I have to fill all this stuff out? They're like, well, we have to make sure you're going to give it a good home. It's like, aren't you guys going to kill it? Isn't that the whole <laughs> business model? You guys are going to murder this dog, right? So let me just, let me take it. <laughs> Did you ever ask them how they do it? I asked them, I was like, what do you guys got, like a little snoopy house with a guillotine? How do you guys fucking... <laughs> 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 fucking blow them up. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. Maybe they use fucking <clears throat> pack a tennis ball with C4 and it's like, go get it, buddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. I didn't, you know, I didn't realize that when you rescue dogs, when you get them from that place, they're like mentally traumatized and like fucked up. I didn't know. I brought my dogs right from the place to a dog park. My bad. That was my bad. <laughs> I let him in. I, I didn't know. I, I opened the gate. My one dog ran in there like, who the fuck's been talking shit? And just nailed another dog. <laughs> it was a big deal. The owner picked her dog up like, I'm pretty sure you guys should leave now. And it's like, dude, my dog won. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. People love telling you they rescue dogs, man. I see bumper stickers about it. I saw a bumper sticker recently. I was behind a car in traffic, and the bumper sticker said, I didn't rescue my rescue dog. My rescue dog rescued me. It's like, dude, call your parents, man. Just call. <laughs> They'd love to hear from you. Just call them up. It's like, we were in traffic. I'm like, dude, this sucks enough. Now I'm thinking about your life. My rescue dog rescued me. That's like the weirdest way to tell everyone behind you you've seriously considered killing yourself before. <laughs> <laughs> like, rescued you from what? Myself. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm kind of weird about dogs, man. I, you know, I'm, I'm joking around about blowing them up and stuff. Like, people don't like that, and I get it. I get that. But here's the thing, I have like a little void within me about dogs. It's like an emotional block. Because like when I was younger, my, my dad would always put our dogs down, but like just a little too early. Oh. <laughs> like they were old, he's not a monster. Like you know if like someone dies and they're 99, you're like, yeah, fucking good, you know, whatever. <clears throat> It'd be like if they were like 70. He just liked the new model. I don't know. I, I can't. There was a time, one time, we went to go put our dog down. It was a little Jack Russell. I was like nine years old. I'm holding it in the back of the car. I'm like, I'm going to miss you so much. Her name was Maggie. I'm like, Maggie, I'm going to miss you so much. My dad's like, all right, we're here. Wait in the car. I'll be right back. He came back like 10 minutes later, just threw the dog in my lap. He's like, that vet's a pussy. Come on, we're out of here. <laughs> don't get attached. We're getting a second opinion. <laughs> Uh, 
parents are good people though, man. My parents honestly are. They're like, they taught me a lot about life, man. They're very hardworking. They're kind. They're very salt of the earth. They're very like, they're wonderful people. But like, dude, here's the thing. You don't realize how much your parents have in terms of book smarts until you get like a little bit older. Like, it, dude, first and second grade, they'd help me with my homework. They're just like, dude, circle, square, red, blue. And I was like, this guy's a fucking wizard, man. This is crazy. <laughs> But then I remember around like fourth grade math, they'd start being like, no, you got it. You go help them. <laughs> to be fair, the problem was one half divided by one fourth. I was sitting there, I was like, dad, I don't understand. And he was like, fucking how hard can it be? It's fourth grade. They got you dividing fractions? It's like, aren't they already divided? It's like, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> And he had a good idea. He goes, go to the back of the book. They keep the answers back there. Like, All right, here we go. We flip to the back of the book. It's one half divided by one fourth. The answer is two. We just looked at each other like, right on. <laughs> For sure. I just like went outside and played. I was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> it's one thing to have your, your parent confused by the question, but to also be mystified by the answer is tough. It's tough, dude. Though to be fair to him, dude, I still don't understand. If you have one half of a pizza and you divide it by one fourth of a pizza, you get two brand new, fresh, hot, delicious pizzas <laughs> delivered to your door in under 30 minutes or less? No. Yeah, man, my, uh, my parents sent me to a Catholic grade school, which was fantastic. Another great move. Catholic grade school in the 90s was weird because I think they were still figuring out how to do it. Like, all my teachers, they were all women. They didn't hire any dudes. It was all women teachers who cried five times a day. <laughs> These ladies would just start crying. They're like, oh, Jesus. They start crying. I'm like a little kid being like, look, Linda, everyone's 30s are tough. We're going to figure this out. <laughs> Personally, I think you should be fired if you cry as a teacher more than three times. Three strikes. I just, I have no, I have no patience for that, man. Like, dude, I couldn't, I couldn't see a group of kids getting to me like that. I would destroy them. <laughs> Be like, I'm a loser? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Shit. Oh, well, yeah, that's why I made $27,000 last year, dude. Just <laughs> <laughs> be beeping my mom's car out the window. I'm like, yeah, that's basically mine right there, honey. <laughs> yeah, I went from there to an all boys Catholic high school. And Jesus Christ, that was. Worse. I went from crying ladies to senile priests. When priests lose their minds, it's like, they go pure Da Vinci code. Dude, it's so scary. These guys are fully losing their minds. We'd be sitting in class and they were just, we had this one guy, his name was Father Muckluck. Just fire him based on the name. It's like, no. He was nuts, dude. He, he stopped class one time. He was just, we're sitting there, you know, we're learning. He was like, boys? If you're going to masturbate, we're all like, we just quit, dude. We're all, <laughs> we're all in the patch, dude. We're cold turkey. It's like, boys, if you're going to masturbate, make sure you look at yourselves in the mirror and don't think about girls. Like, <laughs> this was Spanish class, by the way. I was like... <laughs> then the next day he came in, he's like, boys, if you're gay, you go to hell. It's like, dude, you tried to fuck us yesterday, man. Which is, <laughs> which is it? That used to scare me when I was little when the priest would be like, if you're gay, you go to hell. I was always like, ah. I was a little kid, man. I didn't know. I had two older brothers. All they did was call me gay. <laughs> I, for a while, thought I was going to hell for being bad at video games. <laughs> that was such like, a terrifying way to picture God as a child. Like, I was trying to, like, really get a good sense of what God was when I was younger, and I was, like, picturing, like, a, like an aggressive frat bro ruling the universe. Just some guy staring down on creation with, like, a cut sleeve robe, just like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Can you imagine that guy watching your life? That's terrifying. Just pausing it at the end, like, dude, you let your ex-wife play with your ass in Punta Cana? <laughs> that's kind of gay, bro. 
you got to justify yourself. You're like, hey, dude, I, I was at the fucking pool bar. He's like, oh, day drinking. Sick, dude. Going in there. <laughs> yes. I'm in. Yeah, people don't really care, I feel like, about, like, the, you know, traditional gay stuff, you know, gay marriage, all that stuff. That was a big deal a while ago. Nobody really cares anymore. I think that's a good thing. Weirdly, though, there's still, like, five bakers down south fighting the fight. You know those, like, cake shop owners who won't make cakes for gay weddings? They're like Rambos in the woods, dude. They don't know the war's over. <laughs> That's such a weird arena for that type of thing, too. Like two gay men walk into a cake shop and the owner's just fucking jerking off an icing bag, like... <laughs> Dude, we love pussy in this cake shop. <laughs> We're not down with that shit you guys do. Let me get back to finishing the sugar dove. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna finish this cake and figure my wife, dude. It's like... Get out of my cake shop, you guys. That's like the gayest way you can be homophobic. I don't know. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. They do have the constitutional right to deny services to whoever they want. And I love the Constitution. So it's, it's, sh it's shitty, because the Constitution does rule. But also, it's like, make the boys some fucking cake. I feel like here's what I think we should do to solve the problem. It's like, all right, cake shop owners, they have to make the cake. It's in the law. You got to do the cake, but they can make whatever cake they want. <laughs> Just a seven tiered layers of hell fucking. <clears throat> Just two melting grooms. Just, uh... <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. Speaking of gay guys, I, uh, I have a food allergy. <laughs> I have a gluten allergy, dude. It sucks. I know. It sucks. My uncles all give me shit. They're like, you just do this gluten stuff for attention. It's like, it's like the only attention I get is you guys calling me a pussy. That's... I don't want that. Dude, they pick me off. I go to family parties. I walk in. I have my whole family with me. They're like, oh shit, Marsh, it's Matt. He can't have bread. Uh, do we have any bowls of cum in the refrigerator? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do a comeback. I have nothing. I'm like, that, that would be so much cum. There's no way you guys fucking. <laughs> but yeah, it is. It's, you know, it's weird having a food allergy because like, yeah. you know, people on like weird diets all try to recruit you when they find out. They're like, like my brother was a uh, vegan for a while. He's like, dude, you got to go plant-based. He almost had me. Like, I do like the idea of not hurting animals. I was like, that is pretty compelling. But I have a problem where I always see both sides of things. So I also kind of dig the idea of killing a creature and absorbing its powers by eating its flesh. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, where I kind of like, you know, where I tap out, I don't, I don't like with vegans, I don't like when they eat imitation meat. When they eat like soy chicken and tofurkey, I don't, it's not for me. It's just weird, man. It's like a, you're doing the thing you say you don't, that's like walking around saying you're not gay and sucking on a dildo. That's how I feel. <laughs> Then you got to be like, I mean, yeah, technically you're correct, but uh, that's a very strange choice. <laughs> like, no, man, it's a textural thing. It's just there's something to be said for that real dick feel. You got to try it, man. Like, All right, <laughs> yeah, take your word. So now I have to go to Whole Foods. You know, if you have a food allergy, you have to go to Whole Foods. They have all the stuff you need. It's annoying because it's all so expensive. The food there is just ridiculous, and it's also like a culture shock to go from like a normal Philadelphia grocery store to Whole Foods. If you go to Whole Foods, everyone's all like, ah, they're all peppy. I'm like, well, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> like, I'm used to like regular cashiers at like an Acme. Just ladies just fucking slumped and defeated, dude. <laughs> just a grandma with two big wrist guards on their arms fucking like, slugging a deer park, like, Ugh! <laughs> Just wiping tears off the belt, fucking. Like, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you go to Whole Foods, they pick up every item, they're like, oh, what's this? I've never had this before. It's like, of course you haven't. You're a cashier. You can't afford this shit. Fucking. <laughs> Just fucking the bag. 
Everything there is expensive, dude. Everything at Whole Foods is super expensive. And the reason why, it's kind of a weird reason. Like every product at Whole Foods is designed to make you feel like you're a good person. Like everything, you pick up a bag of sugar, it's like 2% of the proceeds of the sugar go towards some kid in a fucked up country. <laughs> the kid is so sad. He's having such a bad life and his mom's mean to him too. And if you buy the sugar, we'll give him some shoes maybe. And you're like, oh, that's nice. I get all invested. I'm like, my boy's out there. <laughs> you fill your cart with all this stuff. You're like, dude, I am a good guy. And then you go check out and you see the sales tax. And you're like, ah, that goes towards bombs for that same kid. Dang it. <laughs> Shoot. It does. But then you, I, I bright side it. I'm like, yeah, maybe we'll get the shoes first. That'd be nice, you know? I can... <laughs> Pilot flies away from decimating a village. Like, you see the moccasins on that kid? Holy shit. <laughs> it's nice to know there's good people in the world doing the important work. It is weird that products are designed now to, like, make us feel certain ways morally. That's a, I don't know, man. That's like when the, like the medieval church used to sell indulgences where, like, you could buy your way into heaven. That's what it feels like to me. It's, it's, it's kind of creepy. And it's funny because like no one knows this, dude. The first company to do this was Stouffer's. They did this years ago. I, I think I was the only one who noticed. Stouffer's had this thing. It said, let's fix dinner. That was their whole campaign. They didn't do anything. They just put a fact on all their boxes of food. The fact was families who eat together more than five nights a week are 50% less likely to have children who abuse drugs and alcohol. That was it. You just go, yeah, okay, sure. It's got nothing to do with Stouffer's. Like, if your mom's at home microwaving your dinner five nights a week, there's a good chance that she does drugs and alcohol, dude. <laughs> yeah, man, it's tough. It's tough with the information, man. You don't know, you don't know what's what. I get, I get tricked all the time. I constantly get tricked with shit. A while back, I was, I was in a vulnerable point in my life, and I saw this article about microdosing. And dude, honestly, it's, it's cool. But like the way it was presented was misleading. It was like, there was this thing, it was like Silicon Valley executives are taking a little bit of LSD and a little bit of mushrooms and crushing it in the boardroom. And I saw that and I was all like, am I not high enough at work? I thought I was, <laughs> I was pretty high. What the hell? And then I had like a temp job at the time. So, you know, I took a little mushrooms in the morning and they called me like, hey, we don't need you today. So I was just in my room like, am I crushing it? I can't tell. <laughs> I'll tell you what doesn't work for sure is uh, macrodosing weed edibles and working for your father for five years. That's not, <laughs> it's not the way. That was tough, man. My dad does construction, so we'd be in like a trench. I'm running a tamper like, dad, do you think worms are ticklish? <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> See my father be physically disappointed as fucking. You think I'm gonna be like you when I grow up? He's like, dude, you're 32. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, that period of my life, that wasn't a total waste of time. Honestly, I, I was basically, I was high for my entire 20s. I was just stoned all the time. And I like, I did learn some stuff. I learned some secrets, I think. I think I learned. I learned some secrets. Dude. I learned how to drive, by the way. I can be so stoned and drive, no problem. I'm not saying you guys do it, but like, I can tell you how. If you want to know, if you guys might be high right now, you got to drive home, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> here's, if you're way too high to drive, here's all you do. Just fucking, you just look at the road signs and you do exactly what they say. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what they're there for. <laughs> okay, yeah. You see 35 miles an hour, you're like, strapping in, there we go. <laughs> no turn on red? I wouldn't dream of that. That's... Oh, man, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he, he, you know, he has, he has Shane's, you know, he's kind of like Shane's. They yeah. could be related. <laughs> Shane yeah. and, uh, what you call it, Matt can be related. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You can tell they've been friends for a long time. A long, long time. Yeah, yeah you get like, um, 
Yeah, man. Like, um, like the, the the deliverancy of jokes, like the way they go in detail about, like, you know, I guess, like, I guess you could say it's like a joke set up, and then they say a little bit of like what they're thinking or yeah. what they personally would do, you know, or something like that. It, it's just it's it, it's funny. Almost yeah. like how he's standing up there too, <laughs> and I be like, you know, <laughs> like, hey, uh, right. kind of just like Shane. <laughs> But that's a good thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yeah, man. The speed of light. Yeah, man. Is this his first special? No. I think so. I think this is like his first comedy special. All right. I think he's he may have done stand up before, but right, right, right. right this right, is the first special right. I've seen. Okay. He's got some got some uh, crazy stories himself. Yeah, definitely. He says it's pre say to um, when you masturbate. <laughs> look at yourself. Look, look at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> Don't think about girls. <laughs> Don't think about girls. <laughs> Look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah, <laughs> well, like this is Spanish passing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that works. <laughs> that would be hard. Oh, man. Yeah. Jeez. Man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is a good. High up through his whole 20s. A lot of people can relate to that being high through mm, your 20s. Yeah. A lot of exactly. people can relate to that. <laughs> a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, man. Good old days. Twenties. Yeah. But yeah. Well, McCluster. Yeah. Man, McCluster, man. It's funny stuff. <laughs>